Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another video of Mr. Nightmares for a really creepy true Home Alone story. This is gonna be cringy, creepy, scary, and frightening. <laughs> I'm just playing. So let's get into this video, sit back, relax, and sorry, I hope everyone's doing awesome, doing terrific. If your day is bad, it is great. I'm Send positive vibes to you now. Let's get into the video. Home Alone Horror Story. <laughs> okay. Story number one. I live in Sydney, Australia. Mm. This happened when I was 15 at Home Alone. Okay. It was about 9 p.m. and I was just coming out of the bathroom. I heard my front gate swing open and my dog begin barking. Um, Across the hall, I saw some red flags in the porch window and into the backyard. Uh oh. I was able to vaguely make out what he looked like. He was hunched over, had sickly pale skin, was wearing all black, and had long, messy black hair partially covering his face. Is that the something obvious? I went into the living room to see what was going on. My dog was still at the front door growling. Mm. Since I hadn't seen the guy return, this meant he was still somewhere in my backyard. I waited at the door for a while, when another, more normal looking guy walked down to the porch and came right up to the security bars. I don't remember all the details. Call the police, girl. The conversation went something along the lines of him saying, Hey, have you seen my friend? And I replied, Yeah, I think he's in my backyard. He Idiot. replied, saying, Okay, because I've been following this random guy all over the place. I think he's on drugs and might be dangerous. Get out of here. What did he mean by this random guy when he had just called him his friend? He quickly walked away, going we'll be on the darkness right. towards my yard. I should also mention that there's a door around back, but that also has security bars in front of it, mm -hmm. and the door was locked at the time. You better call the police. I waited at the front door for a bit, then sat back down. After about two minutes of waiting, the guy I spoke with walked back onto the porch and looked in through the security bars. He now had the pale, potentially drugged out guy with him, who was pacing back and forth in an agitated manner. I went to the door to see what he wanted. He said, hey, sorry man, I just found him. Look, he's really nervous. He'd like if you unlocked the door and came out here, just so he could see that you're harmless. No! The pain in my chest. The creepy, drugged out guy had stopped pacing now, and was standing unnaturally still, staring me dead in the eyes. It was an uncomfortable silence. I didn't say anything, but stepped forward to push the French door shut, causing the second guy to lunge at me and shove his hand through the bars towards me. Ooh. I jumped back and slammed the door shut with my foot, bolting it. I called my parents, and they called the police. The two men had gone. When the police arrived, they told me about a break-in that had occurred just down the street less than an hour ago. As far as I know, they never found the two guys. Looking back, it's likely that the first guy ran into the backyard mm. to try to find a way in. Yeah. The second guy went to help him. Distraction. Which is why they were back there for so long. He was definitely distracted. What disturbs me is the fact that they didn't want to just break in, nor did the fact that I was home to tear them. They wanted me to come outside to them, or to get into where I was. Mm, mm, mm. People, people. Get it together. It was a Thursday night. My mom was working a late shift at the hospital. My two brothers were away at college, so for the time being, I had the house to myself. I had a couple friends over. We watched a baseball game, had a few beers, and they left through the back door. Mm -hmm. I went upstairs to the kitchen to put the remainder of the beers in the fridge and get ready for bed. I went to bed shortly after, and after a while of laying down trying to actually fall asleep, I heard light footsteps coming up the stairs outside my room. My mom was home. I heard her cough as she passed my bedroom door and entered the bathroom. Then she went back downstairs to the kitchen and started making a lot of racket with the cabinets and dishes and whatnot. I was way too lazy to get out of bed to go down there and ask her to keep it down. So I just texted her instead to stop making so much noise. I, she knows she had her I put my phone back on my desk and flipped on my side to try to get comfortable. Then, I heard 
footsteps coming back upstairs, quickly. My bedroom door opened, and my mom stepped into my room. The hallway light outside my room wasn't on, so I couldn't make eye contact with my mom. But when I looked up, I saw my mom's figure. She stood by the doorway, looking kind of slouched over. I told her to stop making so much damn noise in a rather annoyed tone. When she didn't respond, I sat up and said, Mom? A vibration on my desk let me know I got a text. They know her? that it was pretty late, I naturally checked my phone to see who it was. It was from my mom. She said, I'm still at work. Weird. I dropped my phone onto my bed oh. as I looked up at the doorway. Uh oh. That person standing at my doorway wasn't my mom. Even though I was panicking, I had to think on my feet. I said, Mom, I need to get to sleep. Get out. Mm -hmm. I said no. because I wanted to play dumb. Act like I had no suspicion that someone had broken in. The person at my doorway didn't move. So I picked up my phone, texted my mom in a panic, saying there's someone in the house. I mistook them for her and to call the police right now. My mom replied back, okay, in a matter of seconds. Something that broke the silence in the room. The voice of a woman, crackly and rough. She started saying something. It sounded to me like she was saying, don't know where to go, over and over. Her voice started getting louder, so I realized she was approaching my bed. I screamed, get back, as I fumbled for the lamp switch next to my bed. That's right. As the light turned on, I was faced with some old woman with white, wiry hair. With her wrinkled hands reached out at me. It's all with white hair, neck, long white hair. It's always long white hair. To go. I screamed, get away from me, as it seemed as though she was about to attack me. I jumped off the bed and ran out of the room and held my door shut. Seconds later, I felt her trying to push the door open as I put all my weight up against it to keep it shut. She started screaming, I need to get out, and started banging on the door. I held this position for the longest time, and she was relentless. My mom kept calling my phone, but I couldn't pick it up. It wasn't until the cops arrived and knocked on the front door yeah. that I let go of the bedroom door and ran to them. The old woman immediately came rushing after me, but as I opened the door and yelled at the cops to stop her, they immediately pinned her against the wall. Yeah, she was in right. cuffs and was put in the police car. I told them everything that happened. I said based on how she was behaving and what I told them, she would sure. need to be identified and evaluated to determine if she was mentally ill. And it later turned out she was, to no surprise. Poor thing, poor poor thing. I found out later that night after the cops left that after my friends left through the back door, I forgot to lock it. That was how she managed to simply walk into my house. Ah, uh, that's how she got it. It's definitely scarred me mentally in the sense that anytime I hear something in my room while sleeping, I have to look up and make sure somebody isn't standing on the other side. Story number three. Before moving off on my own to California, I lived basically mm -hmm. in the middle of nowhere on my dad's ranch in Colorado. Okay. It was a beautiful, huge property. I just never loved living in a rural setting. I found it boring. Yeah. Plus, as that old cartoon Courage the Cowardly Dog stated, yeah. creepy things happen in the middle of nowhere. There had been a number of times that people had trespassed on our property, which is why my dad owned three different guns. There was one time he had to chase two men off the property with his rifle. Mm -hmm. I'm about to tell you happened a few years back. I think it was in the middle of June. I was home alone oh, when my parents were on vacation together. My little brother was out with friends or at his girlfriend's house. Village is very like the college, 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 college dog house was right there. Look at Colorado, that. So I had all the windows open. I used to go to sleep pretty late around that time. So I think it was around 1 in the morning. I was still in the living room watching TV. And I noticed the motion sensing patio light turn on outside. This light would only turn on due to very noticeable movement by a person. So immediately I assumed it was my little brother returning home. To be safe, I got up and looked out the window. I didn't see anyone, though. I took out my cell phone and called my brother real quick. He didn't pick up. So, I went to sit back down. Then, it started. The knocking at the front door. Our door had a peephole. 
because obviously anyone coming to our house went out of their way to get there. So we'd need to know who was there before opening the door. When I went to go peek through the peephole, I didn't see anyone. So I'm immediately thinking Ding Dong Ditch. Possibly some local punky kids, possibly my brother. I was hoping the second was the case. I shut the blinds now because I became paranoid that I was being watched. I shot my brother a text. I'm saying, you if I die, it's you. I'm not letting you in. Moments later, there was a knock right behind my head. It was so loud I actually jumped off the couch. Mm -hmm. There was a knock at the living room window, followed by what I can best describe to be two voices. One a deep male voice, one a higher pitched female voice, saying, we see you simultaneously. Heart racing. I imagined it to be the most wishful thing I could think of. That it was my little brother and his girlfriend messing with me. In the moment it made sense. Or maybe I just wanted it to make sense. The banging on the window didn't stop there. It kept going. But it moved to another window. This time the window in the dining room, where I didn't shut the blinds. From the angle I was standing at, I could see two figures at the window. Ooh. No chance could I see anything about their faces. Ooh, wow. I didn't look at them, so I ran upstairs to my dad's room to get one of his guns from under his bed. That's right. He told me exactly where he kept it just in case of an emergency. I loaded the rifle and ran downstairs to the dining room window. But they weren't standing there anymore. With a loaded gun, I felt a lot more confident in opening that front door and going outside to confront the situation. When I stepped outside, I decided I'd do one full quick lap around the house and check on the cattle. I was no marksman, but I had the protective instincts for the property, and I was ready to use the gun if I needed to. Mm -hmm. The whole property seemed clear, and the cattle were fine. So I went back inside, checked every door, and went to bed upstairs. For half an hour, peace and quiet, until I heard a disturbing sound come from downstairs and outside. Ooh. Someone was frantically pounding at the front door downstairs, accompanied with a man shouting at the top of his lungs, not shouting words or anything, just screaming. Ooh. I grabbed the rifle next to my bed, ran to the living room window, pushed it open, and fired around outside into the dark night. It's a setup. Yeah, that's right. Don't do it. The screaming and pounding stopped. And I heard two sets of footsteps quickly stomp off the wooden porch. Yeah, you're running now. And then there was nothing but the sound of the night crickets. The rest of the night, nothing happened. Actually, nothing ever happened again until I moved out. Uh -huh. But it was not my brother and his girlfriend. I found out the next day. My dad was proud of me when he heard I protected the property. I'm just grateful my dad has those guns. And I only Shoot. agreed with his owning them even more after that. That's right. Someone that's gonna happen, I was like, I know it's gonna be set up. I've seen those movies. So you go outside. It was a good thing he got a shot. I was home alone one night in the spring. I was on a FaceTime call with my friend, at one point pacing back and forth in my room. When I passed the window and looked outside at one point, I saw someone outside on the street, just standing there, facing my house, facing my window. I looked a little more carefully and determined he was looking up right at my window. I told my friend Jordan on the FaceTime call and tried to show her. She said she couldn't see him but to call my mom and dad. Call 911. So I hung up with Jordan and continued to look out at the man for a few more seconds. Then I walked away from the window to my bed and I called my mom. I had woken her up because it was like midnight. Keep your arm. Sure, she told me to just turn off my lights and shut the blind and he would go away. What? So that's what I did. And after a few minutes of dying in curiosity, I had to get up, lift the blinds, and peek outside. He got closer. The man was now on the sidewalk, closer to my house, still Duh. looking up at my window. Now I called the police. The operator asked me if the man was holding any weapons. I said not that I could tell. The operator then told me to ignore it. And it, if he didn't leave within 10 minutes... Oh, God, it doesn't matter. There's a creepy man. An intruder he told me that coming. The car would pass by my house just to scare off the man should he still be out there. Oh, okay. So I hung up the phone and crawled into my bed. I called my friend Jordan back, and we talked on FaceTime while I was in my bed for about five minutes. 
She told me it was time to go check the window again. And so I did. He bought a window. And this time, the man was gone. Oh. I stood by the window, with the blinds now up, waiting for the police car to pass my house. What? It took about five to ten minutes of standing there on FaceTime with Jordan before I saw a police patrol car come down the block, stop uh, briefly in front of my house, and a little spotlight on the side of the car being put your blinds my down. property and a few neighboring properties. The cop car drove away soon after, and that was that. That told me the man was gone, not on my property. So after finishing my FaceTime call with Jordan, we hung up and I went to bed. He's in the backyard. After laying in my bed for a solid 20 minutes, I heard a creaking or a cracking like sound coming from outside. I got out of bed and looked out the window, but no one was there. So again, I went back to bed. A few more minutes went by, and there was another cracking sound coming from outside, this time louder. I looked over to the window from my bed and was in total shock when I saw a figure at my window. Bang! I have an upstairs bedroom. And suddenly the cracking noises made sense. Okay, okay. He had been climbing up the side of my house. I went to the other window and screamed help over and over, hoping my neighbors would hear. I also got on the phone with 911 again and told them to send another car right away. Mm. The man at my window attempted to squeeze through the opening in the window, but seemingly gave up when he noticed one of my neighbors outside yelling something. Dude, are you crazy? The next time I looked at the window, he was gone. And according to my elderly neighbor who came to my aid, the man jumped down and ran away down the street. The cops came once again. This time I spoke to them and gave them all the info they needed. Mm -hmm. They said they'd be patrolling the immediate area all night and went on their way. I didn't get any sleep that night, but I think that man was scared off for good. Yep. Next time, get you a... What's it called? ADI? ADI. I think that's called. I believe so. Yeah. I think it's called ADI. ADI. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about where the you have this program that protects your house and alarm. Like once you um, I think mostly when you turn it off, is when you're no, it's when you're in the household and when you're about to go to sleep or when you're when no one's in the house you turn it on. That's why. That's why everybody. This is for the whole store. Everybody. The creepiest one was um I want to say uh, Alan wasn't really creepy. It was more of a like them being outside. Cause you know, the first one was the two guys who said who said the little teenage girl. The second one was the old white lady came. The third one was when um, Courage Kelly Dog said he was when he shot up a gun and that was a smart thing to do. Heads up, thumbs up for you. And the fourth one when the guy was outside just staring at the little girl out the window. Yeah, so, no, no, no. Get you a ADI, I think, I think it's what it's called. And I have one, I, can't, I don't know what it's called. Y'all know what I'm talking about, the, the program that protects your house. Yeah, so, yeah, I like Mr. Nightmare's videos, content. Be sure to follow him, watch his videos for more in the link in the description below. Guys, have a good one. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, all the great stuff. Till next time, peace.